Previously on Chewing the Brew, I drank Mayan Barbonic and I liked it. Now here we are, a year plus some later, and I'm gonna see if I still like it. Hey y'all and welcome to Chewing the Brew. Today I'm going to be re-drinking, but only a small amount of this, what I really enjoyed a while back, more than a year ago, I think 15, 18 months. I think it might've been like fall before I actually started the Chewing the, Brew, Chewing the Brew channel when I was still posting these on my personal account. Um, either way, the video is up somewhere, does exist on my channels, um, and it is me drinking Cascade Brewing's very excellent 2017 Mayan Bourbonic. It is an imperial porter aged in bourbon barrels with cocoa, cinnamon, cayenne pepper, and dates. There are several breweries that try to make peppered beers. I have tried several of them. There we are. I have tried several of them, and most of them are abject failures in my experience. This was one of the ones that I felt did it right and did it excellently. So I'm actually quite happy. I'm very happy. I'm not actually, I am very happy. Um, expectedly so to be trying this again. This is my last bottle. I will not be drinking all of this now. I will be taking what I don't drink right now to a party this evening where I hope to share it with some, uh, uh, well, just friends, you know, as one does with good beers. This is, like I said, it's an imperial porter. So it's not an imperial stout, it's an imperial porter. And what I particularly appreciated about this was that it had a real growth in how the flavors just developed through your mouth. The pepper was a good part of the beer. It wasn't fighting, it wasn't over the top, it wasn't weird, um, it was clean. When you're dealing with peppers, in my experience, or not when I'm dealing with peppers, because I only cook with them and put them on my food and sauces that others prepared, but when when integrating peppers into beers, I am often I often find that there's a, a vegetable character that comes with the peppers. And I don't know if that's how they use the peppers, if they use too much of the pepper rather than a, a dried, pre-prepared, already concentrated form that doesn't carry with it a lot of the vegetable matter of the pepper. Uh, just in my experience, a lot of the other peppered spicy beers out there, they sound interesting, but it's a poor use of adjuncts. It, it doesn't work well together, unpleasant experiences. Uh, Mayan Bourbonic is one of two or three uh, beers that use peppers that I've actually enjoyed over the years. Um, one is Chaca Veza by Stone Brewing. I know that's persona non grata in the craft beer scene um, after they uh, sold to a bigger beer company. Um, and I cannot remember what the other one is, but I've had several that were far less than pleasant. <laughs> Anyways, let's uh, see how this is. My last bottle uh, several years later now, or a year later, and six years after it was bottled. Okay, so, oh, one thing that struck me about this, so it says it's an Imperial Porter, but it is part of their Northwest Sour series. So being an Imperial Porter, you don't think sour, but this is actually a Porter that is sour. I, I believe it might be a blend. I don't know enough about how the two beers are made to say that you can have a sour Porter without it being a blend. So I'm going to stop surmising. Um, the things I appreciated about this beer was that there was some really nice fruit, some very nice roastiness, and the pepper was kind of building and lingering over a period of time, and it was quite delicious. So uh, let's see if I can capture all that again here, or let's see how it's changed over the last 15 months. So it smells of cherries, and not really dry cherries, but but still fresh cherries. There's definitely a hint of spiciness. And maybe a woodiness to it. That's interesting. It 
it's mostly uh, maybe a subtle milk chocolate and then a fresh cherry. So not dried cherries, like fresh cherries, but intense. Um, and then this kind of in the background, definitely cayenne spiciness. So cayenne pepper, you know, the, the pepper you should have in your season cabinet and put on pretty much everything. Um, just adds a, a dash of a real bright uh, heat, usually kind of down the back of your mouth and towards your throat. Hmm. She's sour. She has definitely soured out a bit. Um, so tasting it, it is tart cherries, uh, tart cherries, um, and a, oh, that's interesting. I need to, you know, revisit this. So tart cherries and this woody, um, earthy, um, undercurrent that's kind of there and it it almost touches like a dry dark chocolate but not super dark um, almost like if they make made baker's chocolate out of a, a, a dark chocolate um, you know that like that that cocoa powder kind of stuff but but kind of half to it between there and maybe a 70 percent dark So it's definitely a lot, I believe it's a lot harder than it was. There is an herbal note to the front after the initial like um, sour cherry comes through. And I think that I think that herbal note kind of fades into the earthy note and then fades into the woody, kind of the woody note. So it's, and it's chocolate tinge. That's really interesting. And the heat's building now. Yay! I like the heat. This also has dates, and I think I'm picking up like a very subtle hint of the like date sweetness, but that's kind of later on. Not quite when I'm exhaling, but just coming later. And I'm guessing that as this beer warms, that that might become more, more of a dominant player in this beer. This beer does say serve at 40 degrees. Um, it has been in my cupboard for well, a long time since I bought it and it was in a fridge just since last night for uh, at 38 degrees so it should be right about 40 degrees coming out of the bottle hmm. I'm wondering if it's not so much like where the beer where the flavors come over time so much as where the flavors come in my mouth as I swirl the beer around. And that's very interesting. So all the flavors are there. You have this cherry tartness. You have this kind of uh, herbal to earthy woodiness that's tinged with chocolate. Um, and then you have this kind of prickling, just, just slightly prickling heat that comes maybe two thirds of the way down. And those are all coming from like different parts of your mouth, <laughs> different parts of your tongue. And none of them are, are, are conflicting with each other. They're all playing together pretty nicely. It's, it's an adventure. It is still an adventure. This is such a good beer and such a good exploration of what beer can be. Like you, who, who would have thought besides some mad brained, uh, you know, super creative running a, a brewing company Hey, let's uh, put uh, cocoa and cinnamon and, and cayenne pepper and dates all in a sour imperial porter. Because, you know, heh, let's age it in bourbon barrels. Who would have thunk it, right? And that is why I am so, so, so happy to be living today when this creativity is just run amok. And yeah, there's the, there's the misshoots. There's the things that... Eh, you know, they, they went too far or they didn't go far enough or they were overconfident or they lacked confidence or whatever, um, where their still skill doesn't catch up with a dream or the outcome, despite their best efforts, just isn't all that or isn't my mug of beer. But so many of them are so really interesting and delicious and and really, really, really good. 
I am very blessed to be living today. You are too, like it or not, right? Anyways, this has been me, Chewing the Brew, enjoying Cascade Brewing Company's Mayan Bourbonic from 2017, my last bottle of this. I am sorry to see it go. Hey, Cascade, you should redo this. You know, just a suggestion. And uh, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.